In this video, we will talk about graph attention networks, which is an architecture that addresses the shortcomings of simple graph convolutions. Let's start by reviewing some desirable properties that a convolution filter used in CNNs have. One nice property is that the number of learnable parameters is independent of the input. For example, each 3x3 filter has 9 parameters, and that number is independent of the size of the image. Another property of a convolution filter is that it operates locally, extracting localized features from images. Finally, it is important to note that the values of the filters depend on the relative positions of neighboring pixels. For example, the nine values in a 3x3 filter can in general be different. Keeping these points in mind, let's take a look at how a graph attention operator works. Firstly, for each node i, the feature vectors of its neighboring nodes, vj over here, are multiplied by a weight matrix, w. We can imagine this as a message that is sent to node i from each of its neighboring nodes. Then we take an average of these messages, but instead of just taking a simple average, we take a weighted average, and the weights here are denoted by alpha ij. So how do we compute the weights of this weighted average? This is the step that differentiates graph attention operators from other convolution-like operators on graphs. The weights are a function of the feature vectors, both of node i and the neighboring node vectors j, as well as the weight matrix. Finally, after aggregating these messages from the neighboring nodes, we apply a nonlinear function and we update the node feature vector for node i with that output. Let's see how the weight alpha is computed. So for each pair of connected nodes, node i and node j, we first multiply them by the weight matrix w, then we concatenate their features and take the dot product of these concatenated features with a weight vector a. We then pass on this value to a leaky ReLU function. We end up with a single scalar for each pair of connected nodes in a graph. Finally, we ensure that these weights sum up to one for each node i by applying a softmax function. What we described so far is just one attention head. We can have multiple attention heads, each giving a different weight alpha, resulting in different weighted averages for the neighboring node features. You can think of this as analogous to learning multiple convolutional filters in CNNs. We can aggregate the outputs of these attention heads either by concatenating them or summing them. Let's take a look at how the graph attention operator performs when compared with other methods at the time of its publication. The table here shows the F1 score of different classifiers for a protein-protein interaction dataset in an inductive node classification setting. Each node in the protein-protein interaction dataset in the graph has 50 features and each node can belong to up to 121 classes. We first see here that um, all methods that use uh, the graph data structure outperform um, a multi-layer perceptron that operates on a single node individually. We can also see that the graph attention operator, GAT, uh, in this table, uh, performs better than uh, graph sage, which is an operator that basically samples a fixed number of neighbors for each node and treats each neighboring node features equally. This is unlike the GAT operator, which weighs the contributions of neighboring nodes depending on their feature vectors and not equally. So coming back to the first slide of this video, we can see that the graph attention operator or GAT operator has all the positive traits of convolutional filters used in CNNs. So just like the simple graph convolution operator, the number of parameters in a GAT operator is independent of the size of the graph and it operates locally and hence extracts localized features from a node's neighborhood. 
Finally, and in an improvement to a simple graph convolution operator, it is able to assign arbitrary weights to neighboring nodes.